Allen co-founded one of the largest companies in the world, Microsoft. He became a billionaire, then he turned his attention to real estate and medical research. This next research is the fun, trying to fundamentally understand how the brain works. Philanthropy and sports. He was the owner of the Seattle Seahawks, a team that won the Super Bowl in 2014. It's just been an, uh, an amazing year and uh, all, you, all of those games are kind of burned in my mind. Uh, and especially the, especially the home games and the intensity, uh, the intensity of the fans. Tonight, we look back on the life of Paul Allen. It is our top story tonight. The Allen family today announced Paul Allen died from complications of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma at the age of 65. And he accomplished quite a bit in those 65 years. Let's start our coverage with King 5's Ted Land. Well, Laurie and Mark, it's difficult to overstate Allen's impact on Seattle and the globe. These are some highlights of the life of a luminary who cared about so many different topics. Allen was uh, born in 1953 in Seattle, and when he was 12, his parents uh, decided to send him to a private school, Lakeside, where he would intersect with a very important figure later in his life. That classmate was Bill Gates. The two shared a passion for computing. And in 1975, when they were in college, Allen and Gates uh, formed the company that eventually grew into Microsoft. They were con convinced there would be a market for computers and they wanted to design the software to make these machines work. Seven years later, Allen announced that he had a Hodgkin's disease, cancer of the immune system. And shortly after that, just right after that, he resigned his post at Microsoft. That was long before the company grew into a global enterprise. This is the part of his life where he started pursuing other interests. He founded a Vulcan, which is the umbrella company that manages all of his diverse interests like real estate development and uh, sports. He bought the uh, Portland Trailblazers in 1988. That became a very profitable move. In 1995, voters rejected the Seattle Commons proposal. Allen and others wanted to develop South Lake Union into a giant park. Allen then ended up with a large swath of land, which today is the Amazon campus, another very profitable move. He bought the Seahawks in 1997, helped keep them from leaving the city. Allen also loved music, and in 2000, he opened the Experience Music Project. It's now the Mopop uh, Museum. Two years later, he formed a private space company. Their ship successfully made it into space. In 2003, he launched the Allen Institute for Brain Science in Seattle. And in 2009, he announced that his uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, late stage diagnosis, uh, that had, it had come back after all of these years. He eventually signed the Giving Pledge. It's a commitment to give away at least half of his wealth to philanthropic causes. That was in uh, 2010. And then just a few weeks ago, at the start of the month, uh, he put out this tweet, and we learned that his lymphoma returned. He said he was optimistic about his treatment. This disease, uh, which was in the background for so much of his life, really helped motivate his work. He wanted to do so much, and he really did. Back to you guys. Thank you, Ted. Paul Allen really left his mark on the city of Seattle. He literally changed the city's landscape. King 5's Chris Daniels tells us how Allen left a legacy which will live on in so many ways. Paul Allen had an impact on technology, pop culture, philanthropy, sports, and science, and quite literally on the landscape here in the Puget Sound region. The Microsoft co-founder revolutionized technology, helped transform the east side as the company grew. He would use some of that wealth to dabble in sports and pop culture, helping to found what is now known as Mopop and is credited with saving the Seattle Seahawks in the mid-1990s. He wanted to build a public park in South Lake Union, but once rebuffed by voters, sold or leased the land, which eventually became the Amazon campus. He redistributed some of those proceeds through Vulcan to try to cure cancer, study the brain, save endangered species, and coral reefs. Here's a statement from Paul's sister, Jody Allen. My brother was a remarkable individual on every level. While most knew Paul Allen as a technologist and philanthropist for us, he was a much loved brother and uncle and an exceptional friend. Paul's family and friends were blessed to experience his wit, warmth, his generosity, and deep concern. For all the demands on his schedule, 
there was always time for family and friends. At this time of loss and grief for us and so many others, we are profoundly grateful for the care and concern he demonstrated every day. We also heard from Vulcan CEO Bill Hilf late this afternoon about the difficult day for the company. And importantly, as many of you know, Paul had a tremendously huge vision on how to improve the world. Uh, and a big part of our forward plans are to help realize that vision and to continue what he wanted to get done. Uh, and that's how we're rallying together today and this week and the next weeks to, to carry that banner into the future for him. Allen left an imprint on many buildings around the region, including the Allen Institute in South Lake Union. It's our understanding employees at most of his properties in the region really caught off guard by today's news. Allen owned the NFL's Seattle Seahawks and NBA's Portland Trailblazers. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver and NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell have both issued statements today. Goodell saying, in part, Paul Allen was the driving force behind keeping the NFL in the Pacific Northwest, adding, our league is better for Paul Allen having been a part of it, and the entire NFL sends its deepest condolences to Paul's family and to the Seahawks organization. In the King 5 Newsroom, I'm Chris Daniels, King 5 News.